What's going on everybody? It's RuralYG, and if you've been keeping up with me on Twitter, which you totally should for news channel updates and more, then you'll probably know that in my last uh, Locals tournament, I actually decided that instead of playing something like Bird Up or Branded like I usually do, I ended up taking Fluffle, and that's because I decided that I kind of want to play a different deck every single week for at least a little bit because I've been getting kind of burnt out in general, but also especially when it comes to my live duel content, I've noticed it's just whatever deck I've been hyper fixated on lately against a bunch of randos at Locals and I know you're probably kind of tired of seeing the same deck over and over. And so whether or not the deck's good, bad, or just kind of in between, I decided I was going to try something new. And I was actually pleasantly surprised with how Fluffle ended up playing. So for those of you that don't know, uh, which probably is going to be 99.9% of you except for my close friends, Fluffle was actually the first deck I ever featured on the channel, both in a deck profile and also in the first video, which was a remote duel with my friend and I. It was the first deck I ever actually fully completed, and though Hat was actually the first deck I ever took to a tournament, which, you know, it was 2018, which isn't saying very much, uh, Fluffle was the first one I started taking consistently to a tournament. And though I haven't played it since Calamities got banned, I mean, like, you know, doing two whales into a Calamities with this deck and under five summons is just so funny, I did decide to give the combo version a shot, which I've always done, like, some test hands and personal playtesting with, but I've never taken it to a competitive setting until now, and I must say, I am very pleasantly surprised with how this deck turned out because even though I went 3-2 and didn't end up topping, I performed incredibly well for the standards I had set for myself and so did the deck. And after saying this on Twitter, a bunch of you were absolutely begging me for a deck profile up on the channel. And honestly, I really like Fluffle, even though this isn't the version that I had been accustomed to when I was younger and played the deck. So I decided I might as well give the people what they want, which is why I'm welcoming you to my Fluffle deck profile for the August 2023 format. Starting off with the main deck, of course, let's talk about the three ofs. Starting with three copies of Fluffle Penguin three copies of Fluffle Dog, and three copies of Fluffle Bear. And I gotta say, saying that for a video for once in like the last, god, three years is absolutely jarring. So of course we have to have the three copies of Fluffle Penguin. It's the absolute heart and soul of the deck, especially the combo version of the deck. Being able to abuse the soft once per turn effect of the special summon by just summoning it back or summoning a different copy later, absolutely huge when it comes to going for your Link, Xyz plays, etc. Fluffle Dog being a Stratos is of course really nice, though funnily enough he's become the worst normal summon in the deck compared to Penguin or even Dolphin. And then Fluffle Bear of course getting the Toy Vendor directly from your deck without adding it and getting you drolled, which, you know, absolute bane of this deck's existence, is always really awesome. And I almost used the Polymerization grab back effect so I can go into Guardian Chimera in one of my matchups, but I wasn't able to do so because I got a D-Barrier flipped on me, so big sad. Something I've noticed though is that while I always have been a defender of Bear at 3, it is definitely one of the first cards that I end up citing out in games 2 and 3 when I need to cite in some blowout cards, because a lot of the time you really want to play Engine when you're going first and uh, in your first like round or whatever, sorry, if you win the die roll. But in games 2 and 3, you really, really want to see that non-engine, even if you have to dig for it with things like wings. And so just getting rid of the fluffles to like add more non-engine power cards isn't that big of a deal, because you already have enough firepower with the non-engine stuff like access code in order to go for game regardless. For the one of fluffle monsters, we of course have one copy of fluffle dolphin, one copy of fluffle wings, one copy of fluffle octo, and one copy of fluffle sheep. So just a quick breakdown over each of them, the one dolphin is there over two dolphin because it's always kind of been like two penguin, two dolphin, um, or three penguin, one dolphin, and I think three penguin, one dolphin is much more important nowadays, but also because dolphin is just so easy to search, and opening it without having a way to put toy vendor in your graveyard is always just really, really rough. You'd rather grab it off like a foolish burial goods or the, than anything, sorry. Uh, wings you really only need the one of because you resolve it once, it's basically Jover for your opponent half the time unless you draw like absolute garbage, which didn't end up happening to me when I drew two copies of Fender off of the Wings effect, that, that was really painful. Uh, and then the one Octo is just one Octo, I mean, honestly Octo has never been that much of a card that you, you either played it at one or you just didn't play it at all, right? Uh, but adding back things like Scythe is one of the biggest, biggest things that I've done about this card because you can easily grab it throughout your combo, of course, which I mean, there's no set combos, but there's quote unquote set combos or whatever, depending on what you draw. And a lot of the time when I use like Patchwork or something, I want to grab the Scythe so that I have it on the opponent's turn, but I also end up using it as fusion material if I don't have a different edge to use, and so I just grab it back off of Octo throughout the combo so I don't have to worry about it. And then of course, one sheep, the non-once per turn inherent summon on this card makes it absolutely brutal when it comes to going for link plays, uh, but also just recurring your edgems from Grave, especially Chain, super, super solid to get more link plays on board, but you can also grab something back to your hand like a penguin that you use to special something else, 
and so you can just kind of set up a really nice resource loop. That is it for all of the Fluffle monsters. Onto the Edgimps, we have three copies of Edgimp Chain, two copies of Edgimp Scythe, and one copy of Edgimp Sabers. This is pretty standard overall, not gonna lie. Chain has been something that has seen play at two and three. It really just depends on what kind of build you want to play, how many non-engine pieces you end up wanting to play, how many cards in your deck you want to play. I'm at 41 right now, though I really like drawing the chain in my opening hand or just drawing into it to a discard off of a penguin, toy vendor, etc. Scythe is actually something I really want to bump to three. The going second plays this deck has without like game, in game one at least without having all those non-engine board breakers it's just really, really rough. And so being able to at least do something on your opponent's turn, especially if you also draw a penguin, super, super nice there. The scythe ended up coming up in both games in my volcanic matchup, which I mean, doesn't sound all that spectacular, but scythe popping or scythe making the whale to pop the blaze accelerator, the volcanic blaze accelerator, absolutely crippled him. And he literally just scooped it up right there. So like, I'm really tempted to just pick up a third scythe again and then just play the three, maybe drop this down to two instead. Super, super amazing card there. And then sabers, of course you do run because you have to for your tiger, but it's also come up for the special summon effect to go for link plays multiple times for me, so I can't really complain that much. That is actually it for all of your engine monsters. Onto the non-engine, we play two copies of Castra Fenrir and one copy of Eldritch the Golden Lord, as well as technically this is a hand trap, but two copies of Herald of Orange Light. So uh, a few different things to mention here. Fenrir, so this list was inspired by the one topping list that I can't remember the exact event that it topped. I could end up probably trying to put it in the description. It was on a Twitter post that I saw, um, but it topped a few months ago, and I wanted to build a build that was inspired off of it, but that build wasn't playing Fenrir. I wanted to play Fenrir A to justify my purchase of fucking Fenrirs, uh, but also because I think Fenrir is a really solid card in a deck like this because it's just a free body on board and additional disruption, especially when a lot of your hands, if you can't pop off, pop off off of your RNG, you end up just not really getting very much. So having the Fenrir can end up being a really good card. It's also good for breaking boards going second in case you open it. Gives you free discard fodder for your toy vendors and stuff or uh, your penguin off of the uh, search of itself. And sometimes you end up in situations where you don't have enough materials for something like a cross sheep or an IP that you'd like to go for. And so having Fenrir, yeah, you lose the disruption, but you will at least get to go in your link plays to extend your plays, which I think is really solid. I was playing two copies of Golden Lord like that list. However, I was recommended by a couple of different people uh, to drop it down to one which I mean I'm still I haven't gotten enough like play testing with the deck like overall I literally kind of just did like two test games with this deck and then like jumped right into the locals um but I didn't get enough testing like in total to actually decide on whether or not I want to play two golden lord or not because the send effect is so good in this deck like not even even ignoring the toy vendor send on your field to add it back to hand and special and make a big body that's protected for link materials and stuff even ignoring how great that effect is in this deck, the removal effect is so huge, especially for going second. But one of the biggest things that I managed to do was I ended up seeing the uh, Eldritch off of like my Toy Vendor hit in my Labyrinth matchup, which was probably my sweatiest matchup of the night. It was actually a lot of fun, surprisingly enough. A, a matchup against Labyrinth being fun, I know, sounds crazy. Uh, but they flip Skill Drain, and a few turns go by. He's unable to do very much because he doesn't really see much engine. He kind of just sees a bunch of uh, the non-engine trap cards. And the stuff that he does see for engine, I do end up negating or having some sort of disruption for. Uh, but also, I managed to like hit the Eldritch off of Toy Vendor or something. And so I send the Toy Vendor to add the Eldritch back, I keep it in hand, use the Toy Vendor to search for a follow-up card, and then I use Eldritch Effect sending itself in like Poly or something, and I send the Skill Drain to the Grey, which allows me to start popping off again. I believe that might have actually been the game that I won, because if we went into Game 3, he actually just managed to get it in Game 3, because he literally went for D-Barrier, just kind of out of habit, he was just like, I might as well get it, you're playing a Fusion deck, even though... You play three Fright for Monsters in the extra deck, I mean. But had he gone for literally anything but D-Barrier off of his Lady set, I would have actually had it because I could have gone for a Guardian Chimera play. It would have been actually, like, really insane. But I mean, like, you know, when it happens, it happens. But it was a really fun matchup overall, and Golden Lord ended up saving me in one of those games. It was super, super important. And then, of course, Herald of Orange Light. This is actually the only hand trap that I play, which, yeah, sounds really bad, and it is really bad when it comes to going second or having a bunch of, like, ways to disrupt your opponent outside of your engine. But when you play a bunch of, like, like hand traps or whatever in here especially draw which hurts you really bad because you want to draw a penguin you kind of just struggle a little bit because you need to see as many engine pieces as possible and so a lot of the times when i'm going first i don't even really have anything for going first in my side deck i literally just put all of my gas back in because if you don't you literally whiff like every single toy vendor hit 
you end up drawing any useless cards off your wings or cards that don't extend your plays. So like even if it's a hand trap, it's still not doing very much. But Herald of Orange Light will at least put things like wings in your graveyard or anything else in your grave that you might be able to add back off Octo, banish off of wings, etc, etc. While also being one of the better hand traps in the game that only a few decks can actually abuse. And so while you can abuse this, I think it is still a really good choice. That is it for the monsters. On to the spells and traps, or just the spells at first. I, actually, we're not even playing any traps. So on to the spells. Uh, three copies of Toy Vendor and three copies of foolish burial goods so toy vendor toy vendor there's not really much to explain there abusing not ones per turn effects in this deck is like the key but uh foolish burial goods i can't express how much i both love and loathe this card like holy shit Drawing it plus a way to get to Penguin or Dolphin basically just means lights out for the opponent because you have access to your Penguin and your Dolphin for your Bahamu and your Wings Dump. But oh my god, drawing multiples of this or drawing into it off of a Wings or off of a Toy Vendor or like whiffing off of it, just having multiples of this in one turn just feels so awful. Like it's it's so awful that I literally forgot that it was hard once per turn or that I had already used one because I was so excited just to see it that in both playtesting and in one game where like it didn't really actually... No, I think it was playtesting both times. Um, I literally tried activating uh, Foolish Goods for a second time, and then my opponent was just like, didn't you already use one? And I'm just like, yeah, you're right, I sure did. Like, this card is so good to open, but then you never want to see it again for the rest of your life, including later on, because you usually go through all three toy vendors in one turn. So, I don't know, I might keep playing the three just because it's really good to open, or I might drop it down to two to put my deck at 40 cards. It makes it still consistent without having to risk drawing multiple goods all the time. Not too sure yet, though, I'll probably have to do some more extensive testing. Though, next week I am bringing Dinomorphia, and you might see a new profile on that, so not sure uh, exactly when that'll be. We're also, for more consistency, playing two copies of Royal Penguin's Garden. The good old Skyhawk tech, aw, oh, man. Uh, this card is just so funny. I mean, I literally start doing fluffle stuff. And my opponent's like, yeah, yeah, go on, yeah. And then I'm like, activate Royal Penguin's Garden. They're like, excuse me? <laughs> literally just searching fluffle penguin. The discard effect does come up sometimes just to discard something like chain or putting something in grave. Like, it, it really doesn't do too much most of the time, but it's mostly just there to search penguin. We're also, of course, playing three copies of the best spell in the archetype and two copies of polymerization. So, Similar to Foolish Burial Goods, Polymerization's ratio also kind of ignore, uh, annoys me. Speaking of ignore, though, I'm going to ignore the Patrick. I mean, it's Patrick. There's not much to explain there. But the two copies of Polly annoys me in a similar way to three copies of Foolish Burial Goods, where I actually want to bump this up, but I don't want to see, like, multiples of it. Like, seeing multiples of it is cool for going to something like Dragostopelia or, like, going into Guardian Chimera at the same turn you go into Whale. But, God, I really don't like breaking on it when I could have drawn, like, an actual engine piece instead. But then there's so many other times where my patchwork is literally sitting in my hand or in my deck dead draw because I don't have any more polys left. I've already gone through all of them. Like it's gotten to the point where I'm considering just playing one owl again like I used to just to have an extra way to uh, fusion summon because sometimes it's just really difficult y'all. We are of course playing the one copy of Fright for Fusion. Not much to explain there. Literally just a miracle fusion helps you go into like a really big tiger though sometimes it can extend your place to go into whale on your turn if you have no other way to fuse. One copy of the only real brick brick in the deck. I mean you can use the first effect sometimes, but like literally almost never because it's a one effect per turn. You'd rather use the second effect. I actually end up citing this card out when I know I'm being forced to go second next game because I'd rather not risk opening it over like an actual board breaker or something. And I usually don't end up needing the special summon from hand. And then finally for the other one of us, we just play one copy of Foolish Burial and one copy of Called by the Grave. Not too much to explain here. Foolish Burial is technically there for the Merly that I don't play because I don't own Sprint. But you can also use it to dump something like Sabres or your Wings or your, even your Golden Lord is one of the really big ones. And then Called By, of course, is Called By, especially in Droll format. So moving on to the extra deck, as a heads up, none of the sleeves like really match together. I kind of just threw this together like last second because I had already taken it apart last night to start building Dinomorphia until I decided I wanted to make the profile. And I kind of have to go to work very soon. So um, sorry about that in advance, but... Anyways, moving on to the extra deck though, for the Fright for Monsters, literally just two copies of Whale and one copy of Tiger. These are basically the best ones, and though it does break my heart to not see at least one copy of Sabretooth, I think overall these are fine. Sometimes I do miss having more different things to go into. Wolf, for example, to go for a game is pretty funny, but most of the time you just go for access code regardless. And then of course Kraken's removal effect and double attacking could end up being really good if you really had a way to make it bigger in terms of like Sabretooth or Tiger, but at that point you're probably already in a winning situation. Maybe a third copy of Whale would actually be pretty nice because remember Whale is not a hard once per turn at all. 
uh not to mention that it's just a really good card to have in general like i played three whale even without calamities in my fluffle builds because it's just a nice piece of removal blows up your own toy vendor or blows up itself protects with scythe blows up the royal penguins guard and just anything you don't really care about and then like something on the opponent's board non-targeting and then the send effect to make something big is really really good though funnily enough i actually ended up losing because i had run out of cards to send off of whale effect it was really sad and then of course tiger is tiger there's really not much to say about a card that can just mass wipe an opponent's entire board on its own while also making himself and all of the other fright for monsters absolutely massive the other fusions that we play are one copy of drago stapelia and one copy of guardian chimera uh, these are basically the best two generic fusions that you can end up playing for this deck. Dragus Apelia, I actually don't think I ever went into because it's mostly there for the Merly play, quote unquote, like uh, with the Sprint, which again, I don't own. Uh, but it's also just a decent card to go into sometimes in general if you can extend into it with another poly. Though admittedly, it could be cut for like another Whale or another Link Monster or Xyz that would be really good for uh, toolbox stuff. And then Guardian Chimera, I went into a couple of different times, including I believe in the live duel against my friend that I'm going to be posting. Really solid card. I wish I could have gone into it a bit more but basically every time I tried, I ended up getting hit with D-Barrier, which was pretty funny. That is it for the fusions. Only a third of the extra deck. Funnily enough, a third of the extra deck uh, each is taken up by five of uh, a different summoning mechanic. Moving on to Xyz, we have one copy of Baguska, one copy of Tornado Dragon, one Bahamu, and one Toad. And then of course, one Divine Arsenal Zeus. Baguska is one of the most broken rank fours in the entire game. One of the most broken Xyz monsters, period, of course. Came up in game two in the dinosaur matchup that I did end up losing, but uh, game two, I, I actually ended up winning because, you know, getting hit by Droll and then just going into Baguska, making him like summon baby after activating Lost World, sending one pass, popping off next turn by putting the Baguska in attack and like getting all your resources again. Kind of just really, really solid. Uh, Tornado Dragon actually came up a few times, both in lab against Labyrinth and against a few other matchups. Tornado Dragon popping your own toy vendor to get another search is actually a very underrated play i think it's a really good toolbox card for both against your opponent and for yourself to extend your plays bahamu and toad are the absolute goats of this entire deck like this deck would not be good without these cards in my opinion i think being able to go into the toad as an omni gate especially almost always before summon five or on summon five so so good it's so dangerous that i even got ghost mortar on him twice so that was really foul <laughs> And then finally, while I didn't go into it, I believe ever, uh, Zeus is still a really good card to have as a backup plan in case you're about to get absolutely destroyed. Finally, on to the Link monsters. We have one copy of Cross Sheep, one copy of IP Mascarena, one copy of Nightmare Unicorn, one copy of Appaloosa, and one copy of Access Code Talker. Cross Sheep is basically one of the bread and butter cards of the deck. Being able to summon back a penguin to abuse its effect again after using it like five other times in the turn and just getting another free body on board in general is really good. Usually you're supposed to use it to link off for the sprint play for uh, I believe you're supposed to use it as a link to and then any monster to go into it. But honestly, it's just fine to use that to go into an Appaloosa, which the initial list that I uh, like kind of based this off of didn't actually play. Uh, speaking of which, IP though, IP was one of like the biggest uh, things that I could have gone into. Super huge end board piece going into the Unicorn or even into an Appa if you really feel like it on the opponent's turn. Really good disruption, especially with the card effect protection. It's usually just going to end up being one of your main disruptions on the end board because Fluffle in general has no interruptions. It's just a bunch of generic toolbox stuff. And then finally, access code for pushing for game. I think the one time I actually, oh no, I made access code, I believe at least twice, maybe three times. The one time I actually got to push for game with it though, instead of like my opponent just immediately scooping after seeing it, was when I ended up styling on my friend in the video. I literally had like a 5300 attack access code. I had like a 40 something or 50 something attack whale, tiger, two fluffles on board, like an edge of chain or something. I don't know. It was just completely foul. I think the links performed really well though. I might use that extra slot by removing the Dragus Apelia to put something like Donner in for some more generic removal without having to go for access code. Well, everybody, that is going to do it for my Fluffle deck profile for August 2023. I know it's a bit of a jarring playstyle for a lot of like old school Fluffle fans. I might be clicking on this video, mauling in my comments saying, "Erm, this isn't Fluffle. Where is all of your fusion monsters? Why are you doing all this stuff? Well, honestly, I think this is probably the best way that you can play the deck right now as someone that was a big enjoyer, just the OTK going second play style. And I think honestly, it's really benefit the deck. I really like seeing it in the spotlight again, even though it's kind of like a very niche rogue option, you know, especially in cash format where like this deck folds to any macro effect. But seeing as I didn't end up playing against Cash, my matchups, as you can see on Twitter, were Branded Game 1, uh, Volcanic Game 2, 
my game three was Salamangre with the new support, my game four was Labyrinth, and my game five was Dinosaur, with only my last two games being losses, the Labyrinth one being a very close match. But I honestly really, really thought that this deck did a lot better than I expected. I expected like brick every other game. I only whiffed my toy vendors like I think two different games, one of which being the Labyrinth matchup. Uh, one of the games that I lost, I literally whiffed three toy vendor effects in one turn. I was like, okay, you know what? Let's just go game three. Actually, no, that wasn't Labyrinth. It was the Salad matchup. It was uh, game two against Salad. He set four pass. That's why I got confused. I think the biggest problems with Fluffalo as a whole, even with this play style, is that the grind game isn't that great. You're usually just relying on your toolbox cards after going through all of your fusions. So I think finding some more ways to actually like recover your resources and try again would be pretty nice. Maybe even something like Pot of Avarice could be a funny inclusion. And the other main problem that I noticed is that going second, funnily enough for this deck that it used to be known as an OTK deck, is just an absolute struggle. I mean, like your only actual outs to things are Fenrir and Elvich, which I mean like both of which you have to rely on hard drawing at that point, or you have to like just rely on not getting them negated regardless. Orange Light is the only hand trap you play in this build. Like you really just don't have a good time at all going second. And so maybe I'm thinking of like citing cards like Forbidden Droplet, which I think would be really good with cards like Toy Vendor and stuff, or just getting rid of cards like Foolish Burial Goods that might be clogging up your hand. And then of course getting things like Wings, Chain, etc. Engrave, or even Sabres to get it back later. Like honestly, my entire side deck ended up being going second cards now that I think about it. But I think Droplet in particular would be really, really good as a board breaker and also as a play starter. I don't know though, I'll have to do some more play testing, but let me know in the comments below what you thought of it because that's going to do it for the video. If you liked it, please sure to leave a like as I'll split this video and the channel into Dirk and if this content and also like it like the rest of my deck profiles i'm gonna try to have a new one every single week if i can and then perhaps consider subscribing because we're at 5,000 subscribers by the end of 2023 not to mention it supports the channel more than anything else and it's absolutely free also you want to support me directly while also getting some awesome tcd merchandise in the process check out tapio cards in the link down below use code aurora5 for five percent off your purchase at checkout and to support me financially once again thank you all so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one this is aurora signing off